Hey everyone and welcome to our 90th episode of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. My name is Robert Lewis. I will be your host uh, for today's show. As always, we appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to tune in and watch our videos. Hopefully you enjoy them or uh, find them educational uh, to help you in the brewing process to say the least. Uh, if you want to reference the notes for this video or any of our past videos, you can find those on our blog page, um, mrbeer.com slash blog or just go to the website and it's right there. And you can also browse all of our latest articles that we posted. Uh, we try to do, you know, written blog posts every so often. And that's an, and there's an archive of blog posts and then that go back like seven or eight years. So if you have a question or you're unsure about an answer, go look in there. We might already have done some about it. You know, like I said, it's our 90th video. So we got 89 previous ones that we've done um, for you to check out and reference to. So make sure you are uh, checking those out. Um, so let's dive into our topic today. Um, so I think, you know, when you're brewing up your first batch of beer, the hardest part is obviously is the waiting, I think. I mean, whether it's your first batch or your, or your 50th batch or batch or 100th batch, I think it's just a hard part. I mean, I'm very impatient, so I hate waiting on the process of the brewing process to, to take place, so to speak. So I just want to brew beer and bottle it as quick as humanly possible. So today our topic is what is the earliest you can bottle your beer? Um, we got a lot of people that are starting to brew out their beers, and I know they're anxious to try them. So I wanted to kind of talk about some ways maybe how early you can bottle your beer. And this is also a common question I've seen in our Facebook group. Um, and the answer to this question is going to depend on obviously um, uh, several factors that go along with the brewing process, but also one thing is if you have an hydrometer or not. Uh, the hydrometer kind of is a tool that helps you know exactly when your beer is done uh, fermenting. We'll kind of get into how that works a little later in the video. Um, so if you don't have an, a hydrometer, the best way to know that your beer is done is to do the good old taste test. That's what we recommend with or all of our instructions, because we don't include our drums with our kits, it's a, it's a separate thing you gotta get. Um, so if you're gonna, you know, with the taste test, all you're looking for is flat beer. You just want your beer to be flat and no kind of residual sweetness that you taste, any of that stuff. So, um, yeah, so if you taste your beer, taste flat, you're ready to bottle. With our basic refill instructions, we tell you to taste on day 10 and then bottle if it's flat. Um, I think it's a good rule of thumb. It's kind of tough to push it any quicker than, than 10 days. Um, However, you know, you, you might be able to bottle on day seven, which is kind of the earliest that uh, we would maybe suggest or recommend testing your beer. Um, you know, do you think the majority of fermentation is going to be done in the first 72 hours? That's when it's going to eat a lot of those simple sugars, start breaking out some of the complex sugars. That's when you're going to see the most activity on the fermentation process. So, you know, if your temperatures are spot on, you had healthy yeast, you pitched it at a good temperature, or your wort was aerated very well before you pitch your yeast, Sanit your sanitizing was on point. Um, you know, your beer could be done at seven days when I mean, it's not being breweries turn around beer awfully quick, but they're using, you know, obviously systems and processes and all kinds of automated machinery to know when the beer is done, but this is a good way. So I think, you know, the best way to know again is obviously the taste test. So if you want to try your beer on day seven and you know your temperature is good, you aerated your wort very good, uh, you got healthy yeast, you pitched it at a good temperature, it wasn't too hot, it wasn't too cold, um, then you should be pretty close to wrapping that bad boy up in seven days. I mean, some of the brews we brew here, we turn them out in, you know, in a week so we can try and make sure they're good, but also to see how quickly things can ferment or not ferment. And that's why we kind of recommend that 70 to 72 range of brewing. That's where we've seen the yeast work the best. Uh, so if you don't have the hydrometer, you want to do the taste test and you really want to bottle on day seven, if all those key factors are, are set and you're pretty confident in that, give it a try on taste on day seven, tastes like flat beer, then bottle it. I mean, it's once it's flat beer and all the sugars are fermented, it's not gonna, you know, do much sitting in the fermenter any longer, so you can bottle it, let it bottle condition, and that will help off any remaining off flavors that you may have. Uh, you know, if you try it on day seven, seven, and you still have some sweetness there, try it on day 10, if it's still sweet there, then bottle on day 14, but if you're good on day 10, then bottle on day 10. So I think, you know, we're not using a hydrometer, just going by the taste test. And if you're sure all your factors were right where they should be, try on day seven, if not try on day 10, then try on day 14. But usually that 10 day range seems to be ideal for the earliest you can bottle your beer, but you can kind of push that to day seven. Now, if you're gonna use a hydrometer, like I mentioned earlier, this will kind of help you know exactly when your beer is done. Um, I think the only downside to using the hydrometer is that it has a pretty large sample tube. So you gotta take a large sample of beer and do the measurement there. So, you know, if you're gonna take three to four hydrometer readings, you're probably gonna lose a bottle of beer in the bottling process. So it's good to know that going in. So a lot of people like to know exactly when their beer is done, but they're willing to give up that bottle to know the precise moment when they can bottle the rest of their beers. Um, 
So, you know, um, so when you're using a hydrometer, you know your beer is done, you are looking for your final gravity. Uh, so you obviously you take an original gravity when you mix everything up before you pitch your yeast, um, and then you take your final gravity when you think your beer is done. Um, when using a hydrometer, I don't know if your beer is done, is you take a, a reading and then take another reading 24 hours later, and if it hasn't changed, then your beer is unfermenting. So if you're taking a hydrometer reading on day seven, and it's 1.010, for example, and then the next day, you know, around the same time, you're going to take your other reading, it's so 1.010, then you know your beer is it's done fermenting, it's ready to be bottled. If it's dropped a little bit, so if it was 1.010 and now it's gone, gone down to 1.08, um, then your beer is still fermenting, so you're going to want to let it sit for another day or two. Then take a reading again to see if it stayed the same. So if it's stuck at that 1.08 mark, then you're good to bottle. So I think, you know, the, the hydrometer is a good way to know exactly when it's done without doing the taste test because some people... Uh, using their palates, which are the first thing you might not be for, familiar with what the sweetness tastes like that you have kind of left over in beer when it's not done fermenting yet. I mean, you'll kind of get familiarized with that as the brewing process goes on and you brew a lot more batches, but the hydrometer is probably the safest way to know when it's done. It's a cheap tool uh, to pick up on our website. It works really well, and a lot of people uh, like it. So I said we use here in the office. It's a good way to track things, and like I said, know exactly when your beer is done. My downside is, you know, you fill up that sample tube a couple times, you're losing a bottle of beer. But if you're brewing a lot, you got a good pipeline of beer going. It's not something that you got to worry about. Um, so you can bottle your beer in seven days. And I want to know if this applies, you know, only to our refills. If you're brewing one of our recipes, make sure to follow the, the directions in there. I mean, if it's a 14-day a recipe, you might be able to get away with like 10 days or maybe even sooner. It just depends on, like I said, taking those gravity readings and knowing when it's done. If you're brewing a big recipe that calls for 21 days, you're most likely going to need those 21 days because a lot of other fermentables and sugars in there that – you know, it needs to eat up, but you could knock, you know, a few days off the brewing process regardless by just keeping track of your hydrometer readings and just following, you know, the, or by following the instructions, making sure that your temperatures and everything is, is good and your air running your work well and you're pitching your yeast well, but it's a lot of factors to know. But I mean, I think you can be safe at 10 days for a standard refill. You can shoot for seven days and give it a shot, but knowing with the hydrometer is probably the best way to know. It's going to wrap it up. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it wasn't too much uh rambling there and hopefully you picked up something if you want to reference notes like i said these will be on the blog page mrbrew.com slash blog if you did enjoy the video please give it a like uh comment or even a share that'd be pretty awesome depending on what platform you are on uh, we put out different content on all of our social media platforms uh when we can so the best place to follow us is on facebook instagram and youtube and that's just at mr beer um and make sure you turn on post notifications so you know when we're posting we post about sales recipes brew tips all kinds of fun stuff uh we do some stories here and there so you can see some fun things and then if you want to learn more about mr beer brewing with mr beer i mentioned earlier our facebook group mr beer's brewing society you can find that by just going to facebook searching mr beer's brewing society we ask that you answer three questions if you don't answer the three we won't let you in um, we do let people in in batches, so we won't let you in right away, but usually about once or twice a week, we'll let in a bunch of people. I know we did like a couple hundred uh, a week or two ago. We got another couple hundred sitting ready to go in. I think it's over 2,000 people in there now. We're getting really close to it. Um, we'll do some other fun stuff in there. It's a good way to interact with other home brewers and uh, the Mr. Beer staff. So that's going to wrap it up. I hope you guys have a good week. We might have some new recipes coming out shortly. Maybe keep it on your inbox uh, tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys next week. Cheers.